Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jua. I'm a PhD student from University of Saskatchewan. I'm also uh, working with uh, Mike Village and uh, Dr. Fei Chen here. So this talk is mainly about an application of using convection permitting forcing to drive a land surface model to simulate the prairie pothole wetlands in the center of the North America. So first of all, let's look at where is prairie potholes. So prairie potholes is a large area in the center of North America. It contains of millions of wetlands like this if you look down, down from the plant. And these wetlands are providing very important ecosystem services, including uh, flood control, water purification, and very importantly is the uh, mi migrating, uh, is the habitat for the migrating waterfowls in this region. They are impacted greatly by the climate change as the change of precipitation and also the temperature as the viable transportation demands change in the future. A little bit of the highlight here is what's important in this region is also uh, the key impact of the aqu aquifer groundwater is that so a part of this area has a very shallow groundwater and usually the snow melts in the spring will recharge it to the groundwater and then when it comes to the dry season the uh, capillary effect would take water up from the aquifer to the soil to sustain many of the wetland throughout the dry season. So the goal here is to understand the impact of climate change to the hydrological components associated with this prairie pothole wetlands and how they are, these wetlands are changed in the future climate. Next step is to see how do we derive wetlands from a land surface model. So as I mentioned here, there are many definitions to the wetlands. Some people think them they are the uh, soil moisture as the wet soil surface. So they make a, a table, for example, the soil water content from zero to 50%, they consider as no wetland, and et cetera, too. But also, very interesting is in these places, we will have a very shallow water table. I showed that the color blue is usually uh, above five meters. And then also, uh, you can define a, the, a wetland as a place with shallow water table. But in this study, I am combining these two definition that it can use as a wet soil combining with a threshold of water table within five meters. That's where I think that's the communication from the groundwater have the connection to the surface water. And then uh, Mike already talked a lot about, uh, introduced a lot about this uh, groundwater modules here. So I'm using the same model but in, from an, in an OIMP. I also want to uh, notice one point is this so think about if you're drinking a Coke from a stroller. So you, if the three terms combining here, the recharge term, the lateral flux, and the uh, groundwater discharge to the water, if the flux is negative, it means you're taking water out from the aquifer to above soil layer. So the water level goes down, but the flux goes up. Similar and vice versa. Uh, the next step is to take a look at how I define my model. So I used the forcing for the corners and the current climate and the control as the control run and the future climate as the PGW. These are uh, the corners domain. And I took a black box here as my prairie pothole domains. I run this simulation, these two sets of simulations for 10 years with four years of water table speed up time. And then the next step is to, if you want to use the convection permitting forcing from the corners, how are they behaving in this region? I compare them to the uh, stage observation, also comparing with another uh, 32 kilometers uh, reanalysis data for Kona. We find that the, uh, the percentage bias, the NA has a huge positive bias in the western part, over 100% of the precipitation. But in the Kona's uh, yearly accumulated precipitation is about 20 to 40. So we think the Kona's simulation has a better performance in the precipitation, at least in this region. And then I think this is quite of interesting is how we, we really doing it with the groundwater. So I used the groundwater to uh, the, no, uh, the, the CONUS control forcing to run this uh, NOAA MP and the groundwater modules. I took a few data from the uh, USGS groundwater measurements. The four years on the top are the spin up period. So usually you can see if some part of the groundwater starts a very shallow, from the first year you have a huge drop in the groundwater and then spin up 
I think after four years, they reached the equilibrium, and then the simulations of the groundwater has a good replication of the uh, annual cycle of the groundwater, uh, what we've seen from the observation. But also, we have identified some problems as that, because that, for example, I think these four stations are collecting data from a very close location. So in the model, they are, simulating, they are assuming the water table and the soil property very similar, uh, giving you a very similar simulated water table. But in the reality, like the heterogeneity of the uh, soil texture, soil type, and that will have a huge differences, even though you are taking measurements from a point that's very close to another. But the point here is that the model has a good representation of the annual cycle of the groundwater recharge in the spring and discharge uh, in the late summer. The next step is I'm using enforcing from the uh, control run and PGW. Let's look at how our this change happens. So one of the things to notice that generally has increased in the precipitations in the uh, throughout the season, except in the summer, where you have a negative precipitation, about 40 to 80 percent of precipitation decrease in the PGW. What's also interesting is to look at the temperature, is that the huge, the most strongest warming happens in the winter. It's about uh, 6 to 10 degrees warming in the northern part. Uh, also in the summer, in the southeast, which where you, uh, is corresponding to the uh, low precipitation bias in the uh, last slide. And then I want to show the next step is to show how are the models generating the wetland fractions in this area. So we take the mean of the uh, March, April, uh, mean of the spring season and then summer seasons. That's where uh, that's when the the waterfowls are migrating, coming north in the spring and going south in the summer, at the end of summer. But we take that there's not too much of difference if you only look at in the t color scale there. But if we take these two seasons apart, you find that there's a, a lot of the increase of the wetland in the western part of the domain, but in the eastern part of the domain in the summer, there is about 6 to over 10 percent of the wetland loss in these areas. So we try to understand why. Why are these uh, seasonal behaviors? And then it's also the east to the west contrast in this uh, area. We try to break them down to look at the water flux. Again, I want to emphasize that, uh, look at the diagram I draw here. So it's the blue color is corresponding to a positive recharge flux. That's the water going down, the water table goes up. And the red color is also corresponding to the negative flux. So it's taking water from aquifer to the upper layer soil. So we see from the control climate in a uh, fall season that's in this region you have a red color is water going up in the December as well. But when it comes to spring, it's usually the snow melt, the soil thorning season. And this part of the so water will infiltrate to the uh, soil and again, uh, drain to the underground runoff and then recharging the groundwater aquifer. In the summer, is usually what I talk about is the, uh, like the discharge from the aquifer. When the upper soil is very dry, the discharge will take the water from aquifer to the upper soil. And what's happening in the PGW is that you have uh, less water going up in the fall. Pretty much no difference, um, pretty much no water going up in the winter resulting in uh, less water going up in the, full, in the winter, too. In the spring, there has less water going down, resulting in a net negative flux. And the summer is take the soil takes more water from the aquifer in the, in the summer part, usually in the east part of the domain. And then the next step, I break this domain. Yeah, this is where the slides giving me, because I have some animation, so please be patient if I can't clip them on. Uh, yeah, there you go. I break this domain from the east to the west. So firstly, we take a look at the domain in the east. So uh, these are, on the top is the, what we saw is the water flux going to the groundwater with a PGW minus control. Uh, with this color spell here. 
On the bottoms are some of the water budget fluxes that's on an annual cycle. Uh, on the left is precipitation and the evapotranspiration. On the uh, second one is the snow with tear, and then the, uh, the purple line is the re underground runoff. The red line is surface runoff. On the third column is what's happening in the soil. So it's the total soil moisture, soil water, and soil ice. The last one is the, re the recharge flux, and then corresponding water table line there. So I'm going to walk you through from the cycle in a controlled climate. What's going on is in this fall time, and when the precipitation is positive, fluxes, snow <laughs> begin to accumulate. And then in this part of the season, where you see a negative underground runoff. However, when it comes to March, where I put an arrow here, is that when it changed the sign, that actually is the snow melt and the soil thawing season, where the un soil start to take water from above and then start to drain to underground. Until July, where another change of sign here is what's happening in the late summer, the water starting to going up from the aquifer to the upper soil. What's also interesting is in this area, in the winter, they have a very, like a hundred meter, millimeters of soil ice. The green line of the recharge flux has very good uh, reflection also with the underground runoff, because they, so if you think of that's going through underground runoff and then recharging to the, uh, the, uh, the aquifer. Also, the black line is the uh, movement of water table that it has uh, decreasing in the fall and winter, going up in the spring, going down again in the summer. What's interesting is happening in the PGW run. What's happening here is what I put a circle here is actually a warmer temperature. If you remember, the most warming happens in the winter. The warmer temperature combined with a more precipitation caused the change of the precipitation partitioning. So more rain, OK, thanks. More rains, but less snow. And snows are hard to build up. And also, if you notice the change of the arrow here, the recharge starts very early in the middle of January. And this reach has a very long recharge season from January to July. And then again, in the later part of, of the summer, it uh, has the underground uh, discharge from the underground to the top two meter soil. And what I also want to notice, if it comes up to me, uh, is, this, yeah, is the soil ice is also uh, thorning very early, resulting in a Easily to easier to drain to underground, and what I want to point out here at last is this flux. So remember, this is the, in the eastern part of the domain where you see a net negative flux in the uh, precipitation change by PGW minus control. This is about the forty millimeters from uh, eighty to fifty. It's about thirty millimeters loss of water, and. Let's look at what's happening in the west. If it, it's going to give me the plot. I'm still trying. Yeah, great. So uh, apart from it's very similar to the, uh, what's happening in the eastern part, except in the late summer, where, sorry. Oh, come on. Except in the late summer, if you remember, by the end of the summer, in the eastern part of the domain, that precipitation is only about 50 percent, 50 millimeters of the increase. But now, at the end of summer, in the western part of the domain, it's about 100 millimeter increase of the water of the precipitation going into the western part of the domain. So, here comes my summary. But I think it's too much words, so I put it simple as a diagram. So what's happening in the control is in this fall that you have snow and soil water going up. In the winter, soil frozen, less water going up, and snow build up. In the spring, that the soil uh, begin to, the snow melting, soil thawing, and then the water recharge going down. In the summer, is the uh, soil becomes dry, take water from the aquifer. What's going on in the PGW is you have less snow on the top from starting from fall. And then soil begin, begins to thawing, snow melts very early in the middle of the winter, and then going, giving you a net starting very early recharge season. And then in the later part, uh, the springtime, 
it simply just has less snow there. So the recharge in the spring is actually less than this recharge in the spring in the current climate. And in the summer, it has more flood going up to the soil. And that's how I get my conclusion, that it has a stronger decrease in the wetland in the southeast this summer. Thank you. Thank you.